Wow, welcome to the wrap-up session for the first evening of the Travel Photography Conference put on by Kelby One. You know, this is a fantastic bonus session because it is all about a special kind of tripod just for travel photographers. You know, one of the very first things I figured out in photography, after my camera, I needed a tripod. And when you're a travel photographer, you need a tripod, but a travel tripod. So this entire session is going to be with the inventor of the best travel tripods on the market, the Platypod, invented by Dr. Larry Tiefenbrunn. Larry T, so good to have you. And I don't want to take up any of your time, so I want you to jump right in. Let's start talking about this wonderful tripod. And I'm not even going to call it a tripod alternative. It is a tripod. It is what we need. It's camera stabilization for travel. It travels small. Let's jump into it. Okay. I am so excited to be here again at another Kelby conference. And Larry, you, you know, because we've been talking about this for months now, travel photography is really where Platypod shines more than anywhere else because it makes your life a whole lot easier. But let's dive right in. We've got a lot to talk about. And in about eight to 10 minutes, we're going to get right into our fantastic slideshow. We've got almost all brand new slides from some the most famous photographers around the world, several photographers who are participating right in this conference. Well, guys, you know, we're talking about travel photography at a time when it's not so easy to travel and get around the world due to the pandemic, but the, the pandemic will be coming to an end and hopefully we're gonna be traveling soon. I hope everyone that, first of all, I hope everyone is healthy and I really wanna, you know, say just just how painful it is. We've all lost friends uh, in this and it's been a, a tough time. Many of you know I myself had COVID a few months ago and this was not an easy, uh, easy disease by any stretch of the imagination. All of you who can get immunized, I would recommend as a physician, get immunized, get yourself protected. You don't wanna suffer uh, through this and we've all got to get back to a normal life. Well. We're gonna discuss in a second how Platypod started and it really is a travel story. But before that, I wanted to talk for just a, a minute or two about the value of Platypods. Many of you know this already, many of you may have it already, but if you don't, you'll see why Platypod has become an essential part of your photographic kit. Number one, Platypods are super portable. And we'll talk a little more in detail. We have two Platypods. One is the ultra smaller one, more compact for more compact cameras and lenses. And the other one is the Platypod Max, built for cameras, mostly with lenses over 900 grams or, or in situations where you're concerned that like on soft sand or um, mud, uh, you're, if you're concerned that, the, uh, that you won't have that full stability with a narrower tripod. Anyhow. These are super portable. You could stick them right in your pocket. In fact, Max will fit in my pant pocket if I, if I wanted to. And also, these are made, they're ideal to use together with carabiners. In fact, Ultra is supplied with a carabiner, which you can just hang right off your belt. So is Max, a uh, machine for a carabiner use. You can catch details, especially if you're doing macro close-up or even for telephoto photography, as you'll see in uh, one of the photos that we'll have later on, you get terrific stability. And for cases where you don't wanna have to carry a heavy tripod, this comes in super handy and it's always available in your camera bag. You wanna get ultimate image sharpness and that's where tripods are helpful. And there are a lot of places when you're traveling that won't allow you to use a tripod because the tripod police are out there after you. And you know when you go to museums, national landmarks, some of the national parks, and also if you wanna go up to, let's say to the Empire State Building, there's a sign right at the elevators at the bottom saying, no tripods allowed. Well, with Platypod, you'll get those long exposure shots that you really want to see. It's ideal for tight spaces, nooks and, cranny, and crannies, and it works with your existing equipment. Platypods can pretty much handle any tripod head that's on the market. 
you do need a tripod head with it, and we'll be talking about tripod heads also uh, a little bit later in our presentation. The setup is super fast. You take it, you put it on a surface. If you're on rock or concrete, we'll show you some, some things that you can do there. They're very durable. It's basically a lifetime tool. These are built out of aircraft grade aluminum, titanium bolts. We'll show you some of those features in a second. And they're adaptable. Rocks, trees, all kinds of objects. There's always a place that you can mount a platypod. So, Larry, did you have any questions before we dive into our uh, slide presentation? I just want people to understand and stick around because you're going to see some of these accessories that help you in ways that you maybe haven't thought of. And invariably, when I'm out on a photo shoot and I'm using my platypod, there comes a, a time that I'm like, oh, I wish I could attach it. Oh, I can. So everything from straps to the, the rubber pads. But let's show people some of the amazing things that you can do. And in fact, I was watching Scott's class earlier today, and he was showing uh, platypods helped him capture some amazing stuff. But we're going to jump in and show you some amazing shots that were captured by some world famous photographers. So Larry T, let's jump into the, the slideshow. This is the good stuff. Oh. Okay. We call our system the platypod ecosystem, and it really is. It's a group of products that work beautifully together and with your existing equipment. And our system consists of starting with the Platypod Ultra and Max. You'll also see in this beautiful image by uh, our friend Hilmar Smith, who's Platypod Ambassador. Um, we also have goosenecks that go on the Platypods, which will support continuous lights. We have a multi-accessory kit, which will help you to solve certain problems. We'll get into that as we progress along. And also you'll see at the top, two new products that are coming out at the end of this year called Platyball, the Platyball Elite and Ergo. And we'll talk about that about uh, 45 minutes after the hour. Uh, we'll discuss how the Platyball uh, uh, works as well. We do also sell some uh, third party items such as uh, a little ball head that's great for uh, travel use and a phone holder uh, that is also wonderful for travel. And we'll show you how these items are used in this presentation. How did platypods start? Well, my wife Minna and I were on a trip out west to Utah. We, we start out in New Jersey and we went to beautiful Bryce Canyon and I wanted to get super sharp images and I also wanted to get some nice selfies, not the kind where you stick out your hand with, an, with a uh, smartphone, but something that's really a beautiful picture so I took a tripod with me, and we marched 1,000 feet down the Navajo Trail into Bryce Canyon, and I was so happy to have this tripod with me until I had to march back up the 1,000 feet and had to stop several times along the way, feeling that I was going to need a cardiologist by the end of the trip. <laughs> but we did get nice images with that tripod, as you can see over here, but Platypod would have done the same thing, and I would have saved carrying an extra six or seven pounds of equipment. Now, we all own these little twisty, bendy uh, tripods, anyone who's been in photography for a while, but you'll find that they don't hold a lot of weight, and they also take up the space of a lens in your camera bag. And in a, after the slide presentation, I'm going to show you how I travel and what I put in my camera bag and how easily platy platypod fits into that scheme. Well, Platypod uh, Max has uh, several features just to point out. As we mentioned, there are carabiner holes. We have our spikes, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, mounted right onto the plate in a magnetic holder. There are belt slots. There are also uh, several, about five holes where you can mount the tripod feet uh, in case you're on rock or concrete. And we also have two holes in the center of the plate just below the, um, just below the spike holder so that if you want to stow your platypod on a uh, tripod, you can do that. If you want to put a quick release plate under the platypod, some people like to do that, you can do that as well. The center of the plate and what our patent is based in on is 
uh, listed as um, number nine, and that is a titanium bolt that is welded right through the plate, really cannot be dislodged, and can handle up to 300 pounds of torque. Pretty much any piece of equipment you want to mount onto the Platypod, uh, it will hold. And Platypod Max weighs uh, under 13 ounces. I think it's closer to 12 ounces. Well, Platypod Ultra has pretty much all the same features in a significantly smaller form factor. If Max is the size of a iPad mini, which is about five by eight inches, the Ultra is the size of a standard uh, smartphone. And again, you have places to put belts, places to hang carabiners. Uh, if you wanna mount this onto a wall or ceiling, there are countersunk holes uh, to do that. Extremely versatile. Basically, we consider this your Swiss Army knife of photography. And if you want to shoot like a pro out when you're traveling and you don't want to drag a large tripod, or even if you do take a tripod with you and you want to go to a very low angle very quickly, this is the tool to use. Larry, I'll pause for a second. Did you have any questions or, or I was any just, questions? I was just going to add a comment, and that is one of the things that I noticed when I started using a, a platypod back when, I actually was, you know, I had a photo backpack and my platypod, which I had a, a ball head on that, and I left it mounted on my camera. So I, I left the whole thing connected, and I walk around like that. And I still do that a lot these days. But I, I was still carrying a tripod because I thought for sure, I'd, and I find myself using the tripod itself, the three-legged tripod that I have, less and less and less. And these days, I'm not even concerned when I go on a, a photo shoot or a photo walk and I have a platypod and no tripod, I'm all set. So it's just a, it's a change in thinking if you've only ever used a tripod once you start using a platypod, but you're gonna be amazed what you can do. Well, we've talked enough about the hardware for a little bit. We'll get into that more after the slide presentation. But uh, Larry, let's show some. Let's show some pictures. Now you've all, I think, heard of this guy, <laughs> and Scott likes to use platypods for low angle photography with wide angle lenses, so that he catches interesting foreground in his images. And Dr. T, one of the things, one of the things I want in the inset. Yeah, I, I was just going to say that. I want to point out. Everybody, as you go through, and I've seen this slideshow, as you go through these slides, Dr. T, I want to make sure everybody looks at the small picture that's inset on each one of these, because as photographers, as travel photographers, we're going to want to look at these big, beautiful images. But look at the inset, because that's going to show you how the image was captured. Sorry for interrupting. Please move on. <laughs> no, any, any time. Chime right in. Uh, you can see how Scott is sitting in one of the pews with his iPhone in hand, controlling the camera that is on the floor, taking this beautiful picture in low light with tremendous depth of field. So you, know, you use a long exposure with a stop down aperture, probably I would guess F16 or F22 uh, for this shot so that everything is in focus. Here he's using a 14 to 24 millimeter super wide angle lens and everything just looks so grand over here. He used it also in lower Manhattan uh, on, a, uh, on a New York City tour. And this is an image of the Manhattan Bridge and you can see all the fine detail in the cobblestone late in the day with a lower amount of light. Again, small f-stop, longer exposure, and the perspective that comes through here really gives this such a dramatic look. It's a popular shot, and I've seen it a number of times, but that low angle just adds so much to it. Rick Friedman has several years of photojournalism on his, under his belt. He has uh, photographed presidents, dignitaries, and uh, movie stars, and he was kind enough to submit an image for this travel conference uh, at the side of wow. a lake. And the point to make here is that when you get close to the water, you start bringing in 
the detail and the colors in the background in this beautiful uh, in this beautiful fall image. And later we'll show an image from uh, Rick Salmon. But I think, Larry, you know that Rick has a certain trick that he likes to use to catch reflections, correct? Yeah, Rick Salmon and I have talked about um, one of the things that he does. So a lot of us have seen these gorgeous images where you take a picture and there's some reflection on the ground in front of you, some body of water on the ground in front of you, or maybe it's a lake or something like that that's really smooth, and it doubles the image. So you've got the image in the distance and then you've got the reflection of that image in the foreground. But that can be a challenge to find a big enough body of water that's also still and smooth when you're on a tripod. But when you're on a platypod, Rick Salmon taught me this, when you're on the platypod and you put that close to the ground, he actually uses this. He brings a bottle of water and he pours out just a little bit of water right in front of where his camera is mounted on the platypod, very close to the ground. And that small area with that small bit of water that he can carry with himself creates enough of a reflection and it's a big enough reflection because the camera is so low to the ground that it creates those gorgeous images. And it's something that Rick taught me and I've been able to use it. It's an amazing, amazing tool. And if you have a lens hood on your lens, I'd suggest getting that lens hood to touch the water and, and uh, really, really get up close there. Uh, it's like Rick says, you can be uh, taking a picture or making a picture. Well, let's look at some more beautiful images. Bobby Lane has been a master photography instructor, expertise in lighting, uh, well-known commercial photographer uh, up in the New England area. And Bobby gave us this beautiful image. And you can see that by getting really low down, She's able to bring the flowers into the, uh, into the foreground. You've got foreground, medium ground for the rocks, background in the dramatic clouds with that dramatic uh, angle, uh, diagonal uh, going through the image. And this is really what takes your travel images and sets them above the rest. By taking things, going at a, in a different place and, and getting a, tip, a picture from a different angle than everybody else's, you know, eye level uh, image. Shiv Verma, a close friend uh, to the Platypod family, close personal friend, and uh, with an engineering uh, background, has been advisor to the Platypod team in product development and instructor in uh, New England. Well, Shiv uh, does some photo tours around the world. He'll take groups of people here he was on an assignment uh, for uh, Panasonic to, as a Panasonic ambassador to do a safari run uh, with some of their new cameras. And Shiv wanted to be prepared to quickly have stability on either side of the safari vehicle. So he strapped a camera with a platypod onto the armrest on both sides of the vehicle so he could quickly go left and right. He, he flips up his monitor in the back of the camera so that he can see it from a sitting up level and he's able to get an amazing image. One other thing I'll point out in the inset is in addition to having this strapped around the, uh, around the armrest, he has one of our rubber pads underneath the platypod so that there won't be any shifting. So that's a, a handy tool and very well used here as well. And here's the image that he was able to get with this kind of a setup. Shiv also uh, was, <laughs> was going to do an assignment. He was going to go to a Boston library and get an image like this of some old uh, books, old literature. As it turns out, the Boston library was not available. So Shiv was kind enough to set up uh, this as a similar image in his home to point out how he could use our Max Macro Bundle, which you'll find on our website with continuous lighting to get this beautiful uh, setting. But what's so nice about this is you could just take the platypod, put it on a table, put it on a shelf, and get the close-up or macro shots that you'll want and go in as tight as you want and have maximum stability. Rick Garrity is also a, a Panasonic Lumix ambassador, 
and he likes to go around the country teaching travel and street photography. But the funny thing here is Rick doesn't like to fly. So he drives wherever he goes with this truck and he wanted to get a little uh, image, uh, a little uh, movie snippet for Panasonic. Well, we're not showing the movie here, but basically what Rick did is he took this platypod, he set it up on a tree and then went back to his vehicle and got the uh, truck traveling through the mud uh, very dramatically um, and uh, nicely executed. Hilmar Smith is Platypod's lead ambassador and runs our, uh, runs our social networking. She is also a Kelby One instructor, has done several Kelby One uh, videos uh, recently. And uh, I'd like to show you some nice images that she made for us. Uh, being that this is inauguration day, we figured we'd throw in some images of the White House, but since we couldn't get near the real White House, Hilmar went over to John uh, Weifel's uh, miniature White House, which is currently on display uh, near where she lives in uh, Florida. Uh, this model has been all around the world. It was started uh, in the time of Gerald Ford's presidency, and John has been adding on to this for decades. And you'll see on the reverse side, he, you go into the rooms of this White House. But the point to be made here is that although Hilmar could not use a tripod here because of the museum rules, she was able to take a platypod in, set it down on the railing all around this model, and either use the natural lighting or added lighting from the uh, platypod goosenecks and uh, the Lytra lights that we offer and get the images that she wants. And you can see the detail. Here's a reproduction of the White House press corps room, Oval Office. That's just and amazing. A, the dining room where day, state dinners are hosted. And you can, again, in the inset, you can see how she provided a little bit of an extra fill light using a platypod with a gooseneck mounted onto it and a small LED continuous light, uh, which is from our Max Macro bundle, but also available individually. I want to point out one other thing, which I just think is fantastic about this image, is that if you look at the, candela at the chandelier above the tables and on all the tables, all of these tiny little lights are lit. They're all wired and lit. And I just think this artist is amazing. If you could see this zoomed in, you would see the detail on every chair, every ta plate table setting here. Pretty remarkable. It is. This is the back of that building that we showed you <clears throat> before, and you can see how all the rooms are opened up here. And uh, again, Hilmar's set up with a little bit of fill light uh, that she uh, used. Joe Pellicone, out in Long Island, likes to do mostly nighttime photography and highlighting lights such as neon, neon lights, such as lights from cars. This is just driving through a tunnel. And you can see how Joe has his platypod right on the dashboard. Wasn't driving very fast over here, but doing a long exposure, got it these dramatic abstract streaking lights in his uh, tunnel image. One thing I would recommend in addition here is again, having a rubber pad underneath the platypod, number one, to give it a little more stability so it shouldn't shift around on the dashboard. And also, we've tested this out. It provides a little bit of vibration uh, reduction in addition to the vibration reduction in your camera. Yeah, I've actually done that, Dr. T, and I, and I have the grippy rubber pad and I keep it in my car because I, I will sometimes just lay a cell phone on the grippy rubber pad and, but, but I did that kind of photography and I actually did video with it as well. And that grippy pad makes me feel just a little bit safer with the camera on the dashboard like that. Well, here's a nice, uh, thank you, Larry. Here's a nice tip also for our photographers who like to travel on the road is look out for diners. Diners are usually beautifully lit at night and Joe has a whole bunch of these diners on his uh, website and you can see just how the, the, the neon uh, comes through and makes this just so beautiful, beautiful colors. Uh, in the inset, it's another diner in the inset, but 
you get the idea of how he can set this down low to the ground. And when you're going low to the ground, remember what life was like when you were a little child and you were down only about uh, two and a half or three feet from the ground. Everybody looked huge. And the same thing happens in your images that objects are going to look much bigger, much more bold when you look at them from a low angle. And you're, and you're never going to get an image like that unless you're using a, a long exposure. So you've got to let a lot of light in to get the kinds of lighting effects that you see there, including the sky, but also the, the beams of light coming off of the installed lighting on the corner of the, uh, the diner. Just beautiful work, but you have to have that long exposure. You're not going to do it without a tripod. And the platypod getting you close to the ground adds that next level of, of uh, additional creative capability. Absolutely, Larry. I'm going to pick up my pace because we're running just a little bit behind. Uh, Bob Coates, another platypod ambassador, fine art photographer, and I would encourage you all, if you haven't signed up for photofocus.com, they put out a daily newsletter of uh, three to five articles a day. Uh, excellent, excellent site. Um, Bob lives out in Sedona, which gives him great access to the Grand Canyon. And so he can just drive over and get images like this anytime he wants. But Bob has a special interest also in infrared photography. And interestingly, in this photo, what he did was focus stacking. And if you don't know about focus stacking, you should look it up as to how to do it. But you do several images focused first on the foreground, medium ground, and then background. Because when you're taking a long telephoto image like this, You've got to do, you've got a focus stack to get everything nice and sharp, and then it gets processed in Photoshop. It's a little bit out of the scope of this talk, but it's a great subject to look at. Plus, this is done as infrared photography. Camera has to be specially uh, rigged for infrared, and there are specialty shops that will do that. I don't recommend doing it with your main camera, but if you have a spare one around, uh, this makes for some very in interesting off-this-world uh, uh, imagery. And Bob also went out to California, to the sand dunes. You would think that this was taken in the Sahara Desert, but what makes this image really work is uh, Bob was able to get the tire tracks from the sand out of the image by going low angle here, and everything looks pristine. Kelly LaRocks, London photographer, makes an interesting point in her photography of you don't always have to have a big fancy camera to do, uh, to do your images. You can get some nice images with a long exposure here, as she did, using her iPhone on a platypod with a phone mount. And we'll show you how we can, uh, we can uh, make that possible. But what makes these pictures work, showing motion in the crowd, is by having static objects, such as the signage and buildings, really stable. And that's, again, only achievable on a tripod, in this case on a platypod. And these leading lines that you get in from the railing also make this image work. Kelly does you know, similar motion type of blur with her, uh, with her street photography. But again, what makes this work is the fact that the buildings are sharp. And you're never going to get away with that with a, with a tripod. You're going to get tripod police immediately in those places. Now, Shamiri Young is the editor of the, uh, of the monthly Platypod newsletter, and I'm going to encourage you, because we've got a newsletter that's coming out tomorrow. This is once a month. We highlight three photographers and their work. I would urge you all, as soon as we're done with the talk, because you don't want to miss tomorrow's newsletter. It's got some great images and articles. Uh, is Go to, to platypod.com. As soon as you get there, you'll get a pop-up screen, or you can go to the bottom of any page on our website, sign up for our mailing list. And we really don't do a lot of mailings, but these newsletters are precious, and I think uh, you'll, you'll all get some really good ideas from there. So Shamira wanted to uh, show us a beautiful image that she did, also low to the ground in this forest, beautifully processed and beautifully presented, showing her autumn colors. Uh, Rick Salmon, who also uh, taught in this conference today and will again, I think, tomorrow, uh, and a good friend of, uh, of mine, uh, 
is uh, showing here what I consider to be probably the most beautiful portrait I have ever seen. And this was on travel out in China. He came to this woman with the loom and the, the upper left-hand photo is how most good photographers would have taken this image. Not a bad image, it's nice, it's presentable. But what Rick did was, like he says, use your platypod, use your camera like a drone. Go high, go low, look at different angles. And by setting the camera underneath the loom on a platypod with this beautifully exposed, well lit, you can see beautiful Rembrandt lighting and diagonals throughout the picture, Rick got this amazing image, which is one of our flagship images that we use at Platypod. Lizzie Gadd, if you have not seen Lizzie Gadd's work, I very much uh, recommend go to Elizabeth Gadd's uh, website and look at her work, Self-Portraiture Landscape Artistry. Lizzie will go out to a distant remote place and take it wearing just a beautiful dress that matches the colors of the landscape. She will go out into the scene after setting her camera on a tripod, or in this case, a platypod. Here it's low to the ground. And then she uh, starts the camera on an intervalometer. Every two seconds, it snaps another photo and she goes into different po poses until she gets the one that works. And then Lizzie has recently teamed up with Chris Andrus. They went out together to the Canadian Rockies to get some ice cave uh, photos. And you can see some images on this on our website. And by the way, when you get to the website, look at our blog page. We put up two blogs, blog posts a week, which also give you a, a whole lot of ideas of how to use your platypods. But here's the setup that Chris has. You can see he's using our spikes with the sharp tips down, which really grab the ice and allow an, a stable image. And then Lizzie, who was with him, went out into the distance scene wearing a red dress, contrasting with the blue in the cave. And when you see this full size, it's just an unbelievable image. I, I'm just taking Dave that Williams, that. who also spoke today at the conference. Uh, Dave likes to hop on a motorcycle, go out to uh, Norway and take photos of auroras. In fact, he has written an entire book on the subject. Well, Dave didn't, the, the dress that Lizzie had did not work as well for Dave. So Dave <laughs> is looking just dressed like a photographer. And, but he did the same idea. He put his uh, camera on a platypod, then walked off into the distance with his uh, other tripod and equipment and posed in this self image. Dave was also uh, out, I think this is in Iceland, this lovely town, platypod strapped onto a railing in the inset, and again, beautiful image. I thought I'd throw in one or two images of my own. Uh, Rick Salmon and I went out together. He took me on a tour of the Croton uh, Dam. He lives in Croton on Hudson. Uh, the Croton Dam is, is absolutely stunning and offers a lot of opportunities when you're taking pictures. And we strapped this camera onto the uh, railing and I got this first wide image and then I wanted to get something a little bit more abstract set to a longer exposure of the spillway and you can see how the camera is strapped on to the railing and I would highly recommend using a strap in a situation like this especially if you're going to take your hands off the camera at all because it was about 200 feet down into the ravine below. All right that's it for the slideshow. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about the equipment. Now, those of you who've seen my presentations in the past, uh, this may be redundant. You can stay or you uh, don't have to. But uh, for those who don't know about the platypod system, I'd like to just uh, present some more things and some tips and tricks along the way. Dr. T, as uh, did you have any comments, Larry? Yeah, I actually, start? as we're stepping into this, we've actually received a number of comments. There's a lot of chat going on and people answering one another's questions. I have four questions that I want to quick fire at you. And some of this you can unpack as you're showing uh, the materials. So the first question is, and I know the answer to this, the ultra. Is it stable enough for a DSLR like a 5D Mark IV with a 26 to 35 millimeter lens? 
What would your answer 26 be? 26 to 35, you'll be okay. But when you get to the 14 to 24, those lenses weigh anywhere from 1,000 to 1,500 grams, and you risk tipping forward. So I would recommend Max for those uh, for those lenses. And again, if you're on sand or grass or uh, or you know uh, muddy areas, then I think also Max would be more stable. But uh, in general, yes, you could use it for that. This is an interesting question. Now, uh, you have one of the backers, and I know you're going to talk about Platyballs later, but you have one of the backers of uh, and initial investors in Platyball asking, is there any chance we can get the Platypod and accessories that we added onto our Platyball early backers orders early so that we can start using that stuff before the release of the actual Platyball? Good question. That was made available at the end of the Kickstarter, but it was only until June. At this point, uh, there's no way to no way to combine them. That's that is uh, that's been closed uh, with the uh, with the people that are doing our uh, fulfillment. Okay. Uh, next question but is: There are again, you got great some great discounts right here. Yeah. That actually will beat some of the discounts that you had there. So I think you should look at that. Okay, uh, can we use a gooseneck and ultralight, and I guess by that they mean uh, the, the small light, can we use the gooseneck and ultralight with the Platypod Ultra? And yes, you can. Yep. Yes, you can. Uh, the, uh, in fact, here's, here's a gooseneck, here's the ultra. Yes, it works. Uh, you have to be careful about balancing it. Once your camera's on it, though, that'll give it a little bit more uh, a little bit more stability. So, but yes, in, in general, you can use goosenecks with the uh, Platypod Ultra as well. And there's also a way to put the gooseneck toward the middle, right? You can put it in the middle, or you again, just once you have a camera weighing it down, even if you go off to the side a little yeah. bit, and your lens will go here, or you could set the gooseneck in the back. Uh, it'll it'll work also. Okay. And as you're getting into these demos, here is a, a question I think will be perfect to uh, have you demo. Um, it says, I'm having trouble visualizing. How could you strap a platypod to a tree and have your camera pointing forward, assuming that the platypod is hanging vertically from the tree trunk? And I've done this myself a bunch of times. Okay. Uh, well, just very simply, you, there's two ways to do it. The way that I do it is I tend to use L brackets. So if this is if this is strapped to a tree, let's just show you, you this. Okay, there you're sta strapped to the tree. It's sideways. Use an L bracket. You have no problem whatsoever. Right. Okay. The other way to do it is you put your tripod head to an angle like that. And then, okay, so I'm the tree. And then you just put your camera on that. It works. Dr. T, twist that in the air and show us how the mount looks from the side. So, because we're looking at it, there you go. Because that's what I do, and I have a longer uh, mounting plate, so that's what I do, and it and it fits and it works. Okay. All right. Um, all right. I'm just going to go very briefly through um, through our sets. Uh, we'll start with Platypod Max. Comes in a box set like this. It includes Max. It includes four spikes on a little holder box that can. And it holds, right those, it holds those in there really well because it's magnetic. Yes, and the magnets are neodymium magnets. They, it, it, holds, it holds nicely. And we'll talk more about spikes in, in a few minutes. And it comes with a little velour bag. Platypod Ultra is in a box set like this. And that will contain the Ultra plate plus a 20-inch cinch strap to strap around railings. Not enough to go around the tree, but very good for railings. Comes with a carabiner and four spikes, the same kind of spikes that you have with Max, but it's held together in a little wallet pouch. And this all clips together like this and can hang from your belt. The um, multi accessory kit, and we'll talk about the elements of the kit later on, but has a strap. This is a 36 inch uh, cinch strap. This will go around trees up to about 10 inches diameter. A, uh, a lighting uh, spigot adapter, a reducer for smaller equipment, a rubber mat, or Larry likes to call it a grippy, a grippy mat. Grippy rubber a pad. pad, that's what it is. And also a little case to hold that, all that together. The, our, on our website, you will also find 
goosenecks that will hold lights. Now our goosenecks come in pairs because, and this is actually a package for the gooseneck. And what's special about our goosenecks that you won't find elsewhere is because ours are male to female, they will stack so you can make them double height. Or if you want to go male to male, it comes with little cross nut adapters that will allow you to use it like that. So it's extremely versatile. Uh, we also have this little tripod head, and we'll talk about it more in a little bit, that is ARCA compatible. Okay, so let's, Dr. T, let's Larry, talk about that. Have... Yeah, let's talk about that really quick because I know a lot of photographers know this already, but uh, some people are just getting into this. The ball head, there are lots of ball heads on the market, and there are lots of quick release plate options on the market, but there's one series of quick release plates that seems to be very, very widely uh, used, and it's called Arca Swiss or Arca Compatible. And so when you buy an Arca Compatible plate, that's going to work on all kinds of ball heads out there, like stuff from Really Right Stuff or the Benro ball head you see right now. And so a plate like that, I have one on my cameras, and it just stays on my cameras all the time because it works with every one of my separate ball heads. I don't have to worry about this plate only works with this ball head and I got to get some other plate with some other ball head. So as we go through this material, you're going to see uh, the Arca Swiss compatible ball head plate. Now, Larry, what makes this Arca Swiss compatible is the configuration of these grooves on the plate. And this is an Arca plate that comes with a little Benro ball head that we have available on our website currently. But you'll find the same grooving pattern on my, on my L bracket on my camera. And what the L bracket allows you to do is if you want to go portrait or landscape, you just shift your camera quickly. And uh, that, that works very well. But we're also going to talk in a few minutes about this. That is so okay, cool. Which comes with... <laughs> our new product. Okay, let's move ahead here. And uh, also, I just want to show you, since we have the close-up monitor here, this is a, what we call a square jellyfish, which is a smartphone holder. And you can just mount any smartphone on here. Yeah, okay. and show, the, show and the bottom of that, Dr. T. It has that quarter 20 female, so you can put a a plate, the plate we were just talking about, you can mount that to there, exactly. And then right. that and way- here's a configuration yeah. that we sell that um, Larry will, will hopefully have time to mention later called yeah. the Ultra Essentials Kit, which comes with everything you need to do this, plus it also comes with our, uh, our multi-accessory kit as well. So you can see how easy it is to, uh, to do that. Uh, we also offer little let me get back to the wide view we also or offer little lights led lights very bright and in fact extremely bright uh wow. which is great to just pop a little light into your into your bag now i was going to do a presentation of what's in my bag but i think i'm gonna have to do this very quickly so i usually carry on vacation if i'm walking around a sling pack. I will keep in here a 14 to 24 millimeter uh, super wide lens. I'll also keep, I like doing uh, prime lenses. I have a 35 millimeter in here. The camera, you will usually have another lens on there. Usually I'll carry a macro lens. Plus I can, I can even put in here my big 70 to 200 That's millimeter amazing. lens, plus some filters and other things and a small ball head in here, or I can hang one of our newer ball heads, which we'll talk about later later on there. But what's really special, and the reason I'm showing this, is what about the platypods? How do you carry those? And there's a little thin pocket in the back here, and I can fit both a platypod max and a platypod ultra right into that pocket. And I also have some a gooseneck in here. Actually, <laughs> you know, it's it's just here. fantastic to get your head around. You have 
a tiny backpack. It's a sling pack, and you've got two tripods in there. The two plat uh, platypods are effectively two tripods in that little pack. It's amazing. All right, Larry, thank you. Uh, let's, uh, let's dive right in then to how to use our accessories, and we're going to try to move through this relatively quickly. Uh, you had some questions for me, correct? Yeah, one of the things that I'm curious about, and I've seen it a few times in, in the slides in those little insets, is the best way to use the platypods on rocks, because obviously it's a flat surface, and you don't want to put a grippy rubber pad down on most rocks or rocky beds or something like that. So what do you recommend? So we have a system with spikes. So essentially, and I just conveniently have a rock over here. <laughs> you rock. And if you try to put the platypod onto a rock, that's going to happen or it's going to jiggle around. So our spikes, which are fairly sharp at one end or have rubber on the other, uh, rubber tips on the other end, basically will grab on spikes. And you can use these in configurations of one at a time. Uh, let me get a little closer in over here. One at a time or... There we go. Okay, one at a time or three at a time, making this a true tripod if for those skeptics out there, uh, or even four for extra st stability. And then you simply can put this on a rock. Now it doesn't slip. It grips very well. And then to mount a to mount a camera on here, you simply oh, let me turn this this way. Okay, you simply take your camera, and I have a, a nice hefty Nikon D850 over here with a 90 millimeter macro lens on here, and you can see it's as stable as the rock. That's fantastic. Next question, it's, Larry? Yeah, um, next up, somebody was asking about uh, the straps and putting those on a tree, and you have a couple different straps, and also one thing that I think is very helpful. A lot of people understand, okay, well, they've got two different size straps, but you teach really quickly how to line up the straps and make them grip, and there's two levels of grip, so can you show us that? Sure, and there's one quick thing to remember, black Velcro on the outside. If you just remember that, you'll be able to use these super quickly. So this is a 36 inch strap, but the smaller strap works the same way. Black Velcro on the outside of the loop. Then you go through both metal rings here. These are called double D rings, okay? And then simply you wrap this around your object and Velcro it down and you're good to, to hang a platypod on here. Now, if you want super strength, then use the double D rings. And anybody who does backpacking and you know and hiking uh, knows about double D rings. But just very quickly to use the double D rings properly, you pass it through both rings just as we did, and then it's over under. So it's over one ring. I'll put my finger in here just to keep the Velcro from catching under the other ring. Again, over the first, under the second, and then this gives a super hold. This will hold 50 to 100 pounds of equipment. Plus, once you've hung your platypod on here, now for the max, you'll need to thread it first through, through the loops, okay, through the belt loops on the back of the max. For ultra, you can simply just go ahead and yeah, hang it Yeah, I do that all like the time. This. I'll put a strap around a tree and then just slide the ultra right on. It's very easy And to then do. you can just take a spike, if you like, if you're on a tree, and put it in here for some counter pressure. So the strap is pulling towards the tree, the spike is pulling away from the tree, and you get an amazingly strong grip. So if you wanna do a 24 hour uh, time lapse, this is the tool to use, and it'll, it'll work really great. While you, so, have that, while you have that in your hand, Dr. T, there's yes. one other little twisty thing on the spike. Would you show us what that is and how it works? Sure, this is called a round nut. Uh, let me go on to the real close-up camera over here. Okay, this is called a round nut. So what this allows you to do is that when you spike into the platypod and you want to get really, really yeah. steady grip over here, you 
first of all, when, when you put the spike in, we make the holes nicely sized so you can easily thread it. Once it's in, put the round nut down, and now you can't budge this thing. This is, this is really, really stable. And I think stable than most tripods uh, would be. So those, those are included, again, in both of our sets. All right, quickly, the other items in the, uh, in the accessory kit, because I want to get to, uh, to Platyball uh, very soon. And so number one, we have, and this is kind of outside the scope of this conference, a spigot adapter for lighting equipment, such as like if you want to put an umbrella adapter on it, a reducer, so if you want to take our 3 8 inch screw or bolt and reduce it down to one quarter inch, let's say you want to mount a GoPro camera on it uh, or other small devices or very small uh, uh, tripod heads, you can, you can accommodate that. And also the rubber pad, this is great for mounting platypod onto a car hood or a car roof. It won't scratch the car and it really grips. And if any point it gets dusty enough so it doesn't grip well, you just wash this with soap and water. Again, everything that platypod makes is washable. In fact, even the Lytra lights that we offer are waterproof down to 20 feet. So uh, everything here is water compatible. Okay. Uh, what did I miss, Larry? We talked about the square jellyfish. Right. Uh, the uh, tripod, the Benro tripod head. I just want to show two features on here because we get a lot of questions about this. The first question I have is somebody starts off, and by the way, just to mount this quickly, I'll show you how easy this is. You just take this, you mount it on here, okay, and that's it. There's no tools necessary. There's no D-rings on the bottom that you have to twist because our bolt is welded into the plate. And, so and I Dr. T, that, often. that actually goes for everything you're showing, whether you're using the spiked feet or the rubber feet or the straps, whatever you're using with the platypod and all these accessories we're talking about, everything is hand tightened. Then it's really, really solid when you hand tighten it. And then you can loosen it by hand. You don't need tools. You don't need to go digging through your bag for the Allen wrench or the, the pair of pliers or something like that. It's all very usable with just your fingertips. It's, it's a really clever design. E exactly, Larry. Uh, two questions I get about this particular ball head is number one, oh, the lever is hitting the lever is hitting the plate. Can you see that? What should I do? Well, that lever is spring loaded. If you take it and you pull it away, then you can reset the original position, and then about a eighth or a quarter of a turn will loosen the head and then tighten it again. So just know that it ratchets in and out like that. That's number one. Number two, the Arca plate in here has a safety feature. This Arca plate, not all of them do, has two screws on it. You see that? And the tripod head has two notches in here. That's so that if a child comes over, you have this on a tripod, a child comes over and loosens it a little bit, it won't fall off. Well, to get this off altogether, what you need to do is you loosen it, and then there's an arrow that indicates this too pulls away spring action. So you loosen, pull away, and then continue turning, and it'll pop right out. So if you read the instruction manual, as many people don't like to do, you'll, you'll, find, you'll find that information. But to make it easy, because a lot of people ask, OK, Larry, what, what do I need? What should I buy to get me started uh, in the world of Platypod? And truly, for travel, we have the, something called the Ultra Essentials Kit. And for, I think it's $130, you'll get everything you see here, which includes the Platypod Ultra, a Benro ball head, a phone holder. It includes a little Arca uh, Swiss plate on here, and also the entire multi-accessory kit. You save about $30 with that. If there's one set that I highly recommend for travel, that's it. Look on our website, go to Shop All Products, and it's the Ultra Essentials Kit. We only have a few minutes left. Larry, could you ask Jason if we can borrow five extra minutes there? Oh, I'm going to make the decision. I'm keeping us an extra five. I want to make okay. sure we, we cover because everything. Because I really, I want, really want to talk about the, uh, about the uh, Platyball. Uh, and 
we're, it's a little outside the scope here, but when you're at the website, also look, and Larry has a nice introductory uh, video on our website about the Max Macro Bundle if you're planning on doing uh, macro work. But uh, let me go to the, the camera here and let's talk about ball heads, okay? Platyball is coming out at the end of this year. We are well into our um, production development and tooling phase. Uh, there were some delays last year. We don't see any more delays coming. Uh, we've got this really honed down to a wonderful tool. So why did we need to reinvent the tripod head? And again, if you've seen this presentation before, you can watch it again. But if you're considering getting a heavy duty tripod head, I'm going to suggest you wait because you really will not want to miss out on this amazing tool. So let, let me present. This is a beautiful tripod head. I would not say a bad thing about it. This is one of the finest ones on the market. It costs nearly $500, but it's exquisitely made and uh, very, very heavy duty. But what are the issues that are common to this and many other, and, and almost all other tripod heads today? Number one, and I've exaggerated this with the uh, tripod that you see here. If the tripod itself is not level, and you can see the axis of this is now off axis, and this may happen if you're on any kind of uh, rugged terrain, even though you level the top of the tripod head, once you mount your camera on here, let's, let's put this on here. Okay. You mount your, tr your camera onto the tripod head, and I think everyone would agree that's fairly level. But if the legs themselves are not level, as soon as you go to pan this, and there was a lot of discussion today on panning. I know Terry White gave, uh, talked a lot about it in his uh, presentation. You're trying to do pano shots. You're going to end up now, if you're only off a degree or two, you're gonna be okay. But if you're off significantly, you're gonna really mess up the horizon. Some things are fixable in Lightroom and Photoshop, and some things are not if you really cut off some information from your image. So that's issue number one, is when you have the panning head at the bottom and you try to pan, if it's not perfectly level, you're gonna go off level. Issue number two is pretty much all tripod heads today with rare exceptions have big bulky knobs on them and these knobs number one take up unnecessary space because there's a lot of dead space behind them and number two they can press on your other equipment and possibly crack and damage your other equipment problem number three is a, a, a more minor issue but if you want to take this ball head and hang it on a carabiner, there's no way to do that. There's no way to hang it off your belt or your backpack. And problem number four, which is a much more significant problem, is that when you want to go to level your tripod head, if you're trying to use a bubble level, these bubble levels are usually right underneath your camera or underneath your lens. They're not visible like that. You have to be directly able to see directly on top of them, which you can't always do, especially if you're if you're using a tall tripod. And, you know, this this is an issue also at night because you need some light to see it. So you'll have to take out a light and shine it on this to set it up and then mount your camera on. So those are the four main issues with traditional tripod. In comes platypod. Now I set up this tripod in the same fashion, again, off axis. Now, with Platyball, once you level the top, get our camera here, and you mount this, and here we don't have any knobs sticking out. You mount it on there nicely, and when you go, let's make sure this is level, yep. Okay, that's level. Now when you go to pan, you get an even pan all the way around. What do you say, Larry? 
I think that's cool. I think what's really amazing is people that haven't seen this yet don't really, they're not getting their head around what's going on. You put that on an Arca Swiss compatible mount and then Correct. you just turned a dial with your thumb and that locked it down in place. Correct. It pulls and, these jaws together over here. I don't know if you can, if you can see that well. Yeah. And then you also, okay. you also locked the ball head in its position by pressing buttons? Correct. So what we've done is we've eliminated the knobs and have substituted buttons. And let me uh, come in a little closer so you can see this. Now, generally, you're going to operate your ball head here with your left hand because your right hand is going to be on the, on the shutter. Okay. And here you don't have to search for which knob does what because you just put your hand on it your forefinger lands on the locking button and you just pump this to lock and your middle finger lands on the unlocking button. And what's nice about this is you don't need a tension knob because as you are locking this, you can feel the tension in your finger. And we can provide, we claim 22 pounds of hold, which means if you hang an object off sideways, it's 22 pounds it'll lock and it'll hold it right there and you could leave it there and it won't drift. Uh, in actuality, we've tested this to over 40 pounds and it's held, there's plenty of overhead on that figure. Your third finger, your thumb, lands on this wheel over here and this is what locks the panning head. So pull your thumb back, unlock, push your thumb forward, lock. Very, very simple. It's about a half to one inch motion. We'll get this from unlocked to lock and it really holds just beautifully. Two, two quick uh, points. Little thing can, I, can I add in two, Dr. T, can I add in two quick points? One of them yeah. is you're operating the whole ball head and all of the controls on it with one hand. And, Correct. and I'm used to, with all the ball heads that I've had other than this, I'm used to using both hands. One is operating a particular dial or button or clipping a lever. And so you're doing everything with one hand. The other thing, and I think a lot of people don't realize this up front, they see you pushing buttons and they think, okay, he's pushing buttons. It has to be electric or electronic. And I'm not sure I want to trust electronic to a ball head that needs the mechanics to really make it solid. Well, it's mechanical. So those buttons that Dr. T is pressing are mechanical buttons, not electronic. It's mechanical and uh, it's warranted for three years, but we're building this to last at least 10 to 20 years in the hands of a professional photographer. This is a pro tripod head. This is not a toy. It's got good heft to it. Whereas the other head that I showed you weighs two pounds though, this is only one pound, six ounces. So it's more lightweight and more portable. And we talked about being able to put a carabiner on there. So we have these little slots at the bottom and you can hang this off your belt or your bag. It comes with a neoprene jacket so that you won't mar the beautiful finish. This is a automotive uh, paint type finish and uh, this should last a long, long time. But there's more, Larry, right? Well, yeah, we you also models. have- This is the Platypod er Platyball Ergo. Right, and if you wanna make that level and make sure that it's level, would you show the special Arca Swiss compatible? Oh, yes. Thank you. This is Thank so you. cool. So, so we have, you saw the ARCA configuration. We have that same configuration here. This is the world's first round ARCA plate. And just to give you an idea of how this works, uh, this camera has an L bracket on it. Let me put this down for a second here. This camera has an ARCA L bracket, but it also has some mounting holes on the bottom. So I can just show you how easy that is to mount on there and then that will go right onto the, onto the platable. But I wanna show you something else before we quit here. And I know we're over time and I apologize for, the, uh, for, for keeping everybody too long. But well, that has a bubble level in it. That, that, that plate has a bubble level in it, right? Pardon me, that plate does have a little bubble level in it too. That bubble level can be used also if you wanna level a platypod. You can put that on there and use it as a level. We also use it for calibrating our next tool, which is the Platyball Elite. 
And remember we talked about how it's always hard to see bubble levels? We can't well, see it. Dr. T, Dr. Problem. T, you got to change camera views because we're looking at you from a different camera oh, angle. Oh, 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 yep. Let me, let me show you that. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. We'll quickly mount this on a platypod. Okay. And now we have solved the level issue with the world's first LED leveling indicator, which is mounted on the back of the platypod, of the platypod. So you'll be able to see it from below, from above, from, from many different angles. It's really bright. And here it's turned on. And when you're ready to level, you just loosen your ball head. I'm doing this kind of backwards, so bear with me. And when you match up all four, all four arrows, you are level horizontally and vertically. And as I pump the platter ball uh, tightened and closed, you can see it doesn't shift off that, off that initial level. When you get a cheap ball head, you'll find that when you tighten the knob, it'll sometimes move off, off axis. Plus, if let's say you want to tip it back or forward a little bit, but you still want to use the level, it's very hard to do that with a circular uh, level, but we can do that because all you have to do is match up the two horizontal arrows, and that's it, and your level again. Uh, this unit is, I'll show you, the, the uh, leveling uh, section is completely self-contained. This is water resistant, weather resistant, we call it. I don't recommend dunking this underwater, however. <laughs> and easily, the battery can be changed. Just pop that out. And this is a readily available alkaline battery called an A23. It's used to power most uh, garage remote controls. And cheap, they cost somewhere anywhere from 50 cents to $2, depending where you buy them. So this is also calibratable, so you can calibrate it to your camera, and it can be easily reset to factory settings if you need something done quickly. If you want to calibrate it to the platyball disc, you can do that and check it from the top. And I've found that I was able to match the level on this disc together with my camera, together with this. Most of the cameras are only accurate to within one degree, we're accurate to within half a degree on the uh, Platyball system. Where can they find out more information about the kits? So easy, just go to platypod.com, P-L-A-T-Y-P-O-D.com, sign up for our newsletter, take a look at our blog posts. If you wanna buy anything, just go to shop all products. It's up in the upper right hand corner and you'll find everything you need. Larry's got some great videos on there. We hope you'll enjoy, we'll hope you'll learn something. It's great to be back here at the Kelby One Conference, and I really appreciate all of you who come to join our session.